As the sun rises on another sweltering August morning, NFL teams around the country are busy putting in last minute preparations on one of the most important aspects of the season. Training camp. For four weeks during the dog days of summer, 90 of the most elite athletes in the world battle for only 53 roster spots. During this time each year, Rams head coach Jeff Fisher and his staff will have to make tough decisions that could make or break the season before it even begins. Veterans will look to keep their roster spots. Rookies will have to adjust to playing at an NFL level. And quarterbacks will try and come back from injury. But by the end, the St. Louis Rams look to have their team prepared to do battle in one of the toughest divisions in football. Well, it's a good day. You know, it's good to get everybody back. And, you know, today's our first day where we're permitted to have practice. And, you know, install day number one's pretty basic, and it was a basic practice. And each day it'll become a little bit more complicated and as we add more things. Training camp's been really fun uh, this, these past two days. Um, you know, guys came back ready to work. We just got done off the field uh, a few minutes ago and, uh, you know, had a great day. Um, you know, the weather's been nice, the fans have been great, you know, we just, like you said, like you said it's, been, it's been a good one so far. So. Yeah, I was nervous. I think that if you're not nervous, you know what I mean, you're crazy. You know, I think that everybody gets nervous, you know, your first day, first game, all that, you know. But um, all it takes is a couple plays or a couple things to happen, and, you know, those, those nerves are, are, are pretty much gone. Let's work, baby. Another hot day. It ain't going to beat us. DB's on me. DB's on three. One, two, three. Um, it makes you attack practice a lot harder, you know what I mean? It makes it like every practice is a game, and, uh, and you go out there and um, get a full effort. You know, I think right now we're very confident, and I think we're very good on paper, but, I mean, we all know that doesn't do anything for you. Um, if we need a reminder about how good we need to be, we can just look at the other three defenses in our, in our own division. And so, with Arizona, San Fran, Seattle being as good as they are in defense, you know, if we're going to win the NFC West, we got to be the best defense in our division, which is a uh, huge goal, but I think it's an expectation for this group, and you know, we got a lot of work to do. Well, I mean, every camp's different, but every camp's exciting to me. Uh, you know, in a lot of ways, I feel like this is my first one. You know, it's the first one with this group of players, and, you know, they've worked very hard to get to this point. You know, an exciting group of young players right now. You know, the first four to five days are what we call the critical days because you need your body to get acclimated. So we really try to really be high in tune on those first four to five days because the guys haven't been out in the heat and their bodies have to get acclimated to it. We have staff all across the field that we're constantly hydrating, constantly keeping those guys cool down. We use a ton of Gatorade. I mean, you're, you're talking about 24 bottles per case and I'm sure we can go through, you know, 10, 15 cases of, you know, a practice. You're probably talking even more water. So, you know, typically on the field, what we use is we use what we call them cows. And they're a unit that holds water and ice, and they have little tubes to them that we can turn on, and that gives them water. So, we go through quite a bit of 10 gallons during that time. Hydration as an athletic trainer uh, is probably one of the top key components, especially this time of year. Dealing with heat illness issues, you don't see it much because it's very preventive, but when it does happen, it can be catastrophic, and it can be something that can really bring bring a lot of uh, a lot of turmoil to a team. So we really make sure 
that we hydrate well and we take it really important, especially during this time where it's really hot because it, it's something that is preventable. And if we just do our job, we can really prevent something that can you know, turn out to be you know, catastrophic. We never want to get to that and it's really important that we're prepared for that when it happens. Looking at heat indexes, you're over 110, 115, 120 sometimes here in St. Louis. Key component with heat is not just so much the temperature, but the heat index or the humidity, because that doesn't allow the body to sweat or evaporate sweat. And if that's the case, that's where we can get our overheating type problems. Just drink a lot of water every day, make sure that I'm drinking before and after practice, um, you know, get a good meal in the morning, make sure I start my day off right. This is going to be a hot day today, but uh, um, just, just make sure that I have that in my system will help me. Hard work! Hard work! Hard work! Hard work! Hard work! That's what they say! Hard work! Hard work! I earn my pay! Hard work! Hard work! Do it every day! Hard work! I get up about a quarter to three! Hard work! Got to go and earn my pay! Hard work! Put my boots on and lace them up! Hard work! Got enough! Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, work. work! With over 90 players on the roster at the start of camp, it's up to the guys on the Rams equipment team to keep them prepared for workouts and practice every single day. We normally start off getting in about by 536, knock out some laundry. We have 90 players, 50 staff members that we're doing laundry for. They're wearing three, three sets a day. So that's quite a bit of laundry. Part of my staff will get ready for the game while part of the other staff is just doing laundry. There's four, three guys that do nothing but laundry all day long. They never stop. There are probably some moms that would be like, look at all that laundry you're doing, this is ridiculous. So part of my staff will get ready for the game, whether it's packing jerseys, checking jerseys, customizing jerseys, pants, uh, helmets. We take care of the helmets, obviously, shoulder pads, all the padding. We have pretty much a 53-foot semi with the moving crew. We move the equivalent of a four-bedroom home every weekend, whether it's just downtown to the Dome in St. Louis, or if we put on an airplane flight to San Francisco and play, then put it on another truck, bring it right back. We really play 20, 20 road games a year. Every game is the same for us. It just depends on how far we travel. Whether we're traveling the 30 minutes to the, the dome here in St. Town, or we're going to get on a plane and flying across the country. We'll pull into a stadium, whether it's here or on the road. They'll back up to the loading dock, and everything's on wheels for the most part. They'll start rolling everything down the locker room. It's a full, all hands on deck situation. We have 10 guys helping us between my staff and game day staff. Well, every individual player gives their shoulder pads, their um, helmets their uniforms, we check all that in, double check it, make sure it's there. The second week of camp brings the Rams' first home game of the season. For veterans and rookies alike, it is the first time to suit up in front of the home crowd. Hey, like we said last week, no words necessary. Go out and be physical. Let's go. Rams on three. One, two, three. Yeah. We're underway in downtown St. Louis. Going up to make the catch. In stride. The 50. Being chased. And he's going to be sacked by Michael Sam. 
Battling for roster spots as well as the Green Bay Packers, players look to put what they've learned on the practice field to use against a real opponent and show the coaches what they're made of. Boy, the ball's out, picked up by Cody Davis. He's got the football running run. Zamp takes, fires a dart to the end zone. It's caught in traffic for a touchdown. What a grab by Lance Kendricks. Week three of the preseason is considered a dress rehearsal for NFL teams. With potential starters playing for most of the first half, this is a crucial time for coaches to see what their teams could potentially look like. See, I was born a champion, elevated, make moves like a Marion. Have you ever seen a rapper like me with a flow so mean? Not in a million years. Thriller from Manila, rhyme killer, he don't get no iller. Shake up the whole town like Godzilla. Take a look right in my eyes, see I'm a winner. All the just runs away here at First Energy Stadium. Anything I touch or excel, no matter what. Champion spirit. We be on limits, cause I got what it takes to complete the mission. I'm a champion, check me in the ring. Punch like can come and check me in the ring. Chase 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Chris Gibbons. Wow, a bolt of lightning. I'm a champ, I'm a champ. Let the world know the champ is back. Sam wraps him up for a sack and gives up the Johnny Football money sign as a celebration. Way to go, Michael Sam. Yes, winning is the motive. I'm full speed ahead. My wheels is in motion. No turning back till I reach my destination. Number one spot is my final destination. Kenny Frisk goes up and makes a great catch between two defenders. The Rams would pummel the Browns 33-14 but the win would be overshadowed by a scary moment in the first quarter. Second and seven, now Sam, shotgun, fires, near side, incomplete. Again, he could not connect with Jared Cook. Full breakfast down. And Sam is down, back on the 22-yard line. Oh, man. Oh, man. Jeff Fisher walking slowly. Out to midfield. I didn't see what happened to Bradford after he released the football. He took a shot at the end. A guy came free at the end, just wrapped him up and bent him forward, maybe hyperextended the knee. Well, let me uh, first off address the obvious. I know it's what, what everybody wants to hear. I really don't have any information for you as far as Sam is concerned. Um, we'll, we'll go back and we'll do tests tomorrow. Well, I mean, we'll see. You can't speculate. Uh, no use in doing it, so uh, we won't do it. And uh, we'll just wait till tomorrow and wait till coach tells us something different. Uh, but, you know, injuries are part of the game. We'll, we'll see what happens. A day after returning home from Cleveland, Rams fans and coaches braced for the bad news. Unfortunately, I can confirm uh, that we have lost Sam um, for the year. Uh, Sam uh, suffered uh, an injury you know, to the reconstructive knee uh, you know, that he had done less than a year ago. We move forward as a football team. Um, Sean's our guy. Um, we brought him here. Uh, he's got experience. Uh, we've got all the confidence in the world in him. Um, we have around our quarterback position right now probably as good a talent uh, as we've had since we came here. And Sean's excited about that, and I know he'll benefit from that. This team's going to rally around around Sean, and um, we're going to go play. You know, they really are. So. The team would have to shake off the loss of Sam Bradford as they travel to Miami to face the Dolphins in the final game of the preseason. As players sit in their lockers knowing they had made it this far, they are also aware this would be the final time for them to prove they deserve a spot on the 2014 St. Louis Rams. Man, you 
hard today. Let's go, baby. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, that's the last preseason, baby. Everybody do what they got to do. Show that you need to make this team, baby. Hey, we got Rams on three. One, two, three. Rams. Austin Pettis. RBN Production.